So let's look at exactly what's happening with our cup in this demonstration. So the cup is rounded. It's also going to change the direction, so it's going to refract. Let me actually film this. It's going to refract, so the angle of, or the speed of light is going to decrease. As it converges inward, it's going to hit the edge again, and then it's going to project on the opposite end, which flips your arrow around. So this is the refraction and converging of the light ray as it goes through the water. Okay, any questions on refraction? Let's get into reflection. So I've got a couple of mirrors here. One is a, um, a they're curved mirrors. One curves outward, very similar to this. You can see it better in this mirror, but you can see how the curved mirror distorts the image, right? It curves it along with the edges of the mirror. So I've got a diverging mirror here, and I've also got a converging mirror, and um, I'm going to have you make some observations. The diverging mirror is not um, as exciting as the converging mirror, but before we do that, let me have you put all your um, cups to the back of the room for me, please, very carefully without spilling. <laughs> I've got tissue paper if you need it. Oh, leave the arrows at your desk as you're putting things away. I'll come around and collect them. If you're at a lab table, it'd be easiest if you put your arrows toward the edge of your table so that I can just scoop them up. Oh. normal mirror. What happens is you've got your, you guys want to pay attention to this because it's going to be very similar to your um, see-through box lab today or it's going to be very useful. But you've got a light ray coming toward a mirror. It's going to reflect, which we've seen in our demos before. But it reflects at a very specific angle. It is the same angle in which the incident ray, the direct ray of light coming into the mirror is from what we call the normal, which is a 90 degree angle from the flat mirror itself. So as it comes in, it's going to, if it comes in at, let's say, 50 degrees, it's going to bounce back at 50 degrees or bounce out at 50 degrees. If you narrow that angle, then the reflected angle or the reflected ray will also narrow out toward our normal. If you widen it, it'll widen as well. So that stays consistent. Now if you have bent mirrors or converging mirrors, it'll widen or narrow down that reflected ray. So let's look at a diverging ray first. This is a diverging ray which curves outward and it's not that drastic, not as much as the one that I uh, showed you in the slide, but I'm just gonna use it here because it's very clear. But can you see how it distorts maybe at the top or around the edges? Can you see how it distorts the image and over here as well? So it's diverging the image the mirror is being bent. 
Now, this one's not as exciting. Thank you. Let's go into the converging. This one, thank goodness it's lighter. This one, I want you to notice what happens to your image. If I flip it upside down, will everyone turn right side up? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yay, it works. So, did everyone see their image or the image of the class at least? Okay, so what happened? What did you see? Upside down. Everyone was upside down. I mean, I have some a volunteer come up. I'm going to have you walk forward and backward, closer and further away from the mirror, and tell us what you observe. Alan. <laughs> so you can walk toward it, you can walk. And you're going to walk toward the mirror and away from it. And try to get directly into it. Oh, wow, this sounds like a uh-oh, maybe this is not the right. I don't know, I can walk close up where I actually see myself in the mirror. And you walk, if you walk down this aisle right here, will it? Just walk, walk forward and back, this way. Okay, so you see yourself? Yeah. Okay, now walk forward the mirror. <laughs> Right side up. So there was a point where Alec was able to see himself right side up. Yeah, really, really good observation. I I never thought about that, but if you have a spoon at home that's shiny enough, I feel like my spoons just aren't shiny enough. But you can actually experience converging and diverging. Alec said that as it got closer and closer, he was able to see himself right side up rather than upside down. So let's look at what's happening with these mirrors. When we have a diverging mirror, mirror, everything is opened wider. So you generally see things a little bit bigger um, in a diverging mirror, especially along the edges where it's most curved. Now in a concave mirror, when the image comes in and it approaches your eye, it will flip everything upside down. The top will turn to the bottom. The bottom will turn to the top. But that's only past this position. So if all of your eyes are beyond this point, everything appears upside down. Alec moved close enough where he hit this point right here. This point, everything's going to be smaller, but his head is going to still appear on top, and his torso is going to still appear on the bottom. So depending on where you stand from this focus, this is what we call focus, it depends on what direction you're going to see your image in. So past this point, everything's upside down. If you move forward, everything's going to still be right side up. Any questions? All right, if you want to play around with these mirrors, I'm going to put them up kind of in the back of the room. But this idea of the reflected ray being equal to the angle of incident is gonna be important in our very last lab of this unit. I'm only gonna have you do activity one. It's called the see-through box. You don't have to do activity two or three. Uh, you can cross the back page out. So activity one, is called the see-through box and I want to highlight that you want it to appear as if you are literally looking at Gumby through the box. Notice how my Gumby has one hand up and one hand down. I want you to set your Gumby up so that they have one hand up and one hand down. This lets you know your orientation whether it's the same flipped left to right or upside down, but everyone's going to have a box, everyone's going to have four sets of mirrors, and your goal is to set Gumby up behind the mirror 
and I'm setting him up this way, and you're going to create a set of reflections so that the light traveling from Gumby is able to bounce off each of the four mirrors directly into your eye. But I want to make sure that it appears like you're looking through that box. So if Gumby has his right hand up, I want to see if you can look through the four mirrors and actually see Gumby with his right hand up. I had some students show me Gumby's backside. I had some students show Gumby diagonal. I want it to be as if I'm literally looking through this box and I can see Gumby right in front of me. Let's go over first the four book orientation, or sorry, the four mirror setup. And this is one of the many. I've seen some really unique ones where I had a mirror on this side and then on this side. So there's other ways that it can be set up. This is the most obvious, I think. So you want it to bounce downward toward the box. It's going to bounce off of this mirror, down to this mirror, to the mirror that's in front of the box so that it appears as if you're looking through the box. So as for orientation, was it the same or was it flipped? It was the same. So we only did the beginning part of the reflection and mirrors lab, which was the see-through box activity, because um, you will not be able to do the see-through box activity. I have this physics classroom activity that you can do from home that is very similar. Unfortunately, you don't have the links here to do that. So what you can do is if you get into the agenda, there is a set of links for the lesson that we did in class. And at the very bottom of that slideshow, you've got the links for the plain mirror and for the who can see who activity. What you want to do in order to get your stamp for this worksheet, you don't have to do the see-through box activity, but if you can send me a screenshot of your completion for these two activities, which you can get through these links, then I will give you a stamp for it and you will be able to turn in your worksheet with, um, with this worksheet completed. So um, let me know if you have any questions on it and try to get your packet in as soon as it is done. Thank you.